A lot of people tend to become obsessed with investment returns and optimising for an extra half a percentage point here and there. However, the fundamental driver of achieving financial independence is actually down to your savings rate. Saving is often seen as a defensive move, but saving is the foundation of your financial security. When you have a secure financial base, you can go on the offensive and take the fight to the enemy. You can afford to take more risk, and more risk should mean more reward. When investing, the stronger the foundations of your financial castle, the braver you should be. Remember, first things first, clear that expensive debt and get a cash emergency fund in place. But after that, you can afford to be braver with your money, take equity risk and buy into the stock market. The braver you are, the higher your expected returns should be. With savings, you can also be braver in your career as well. As you get promoted up the ladder, you may have to accept more risk. Things can feel more precarious higher up the greasy pole. A higher salary makes you a juicier cost saving from an incoming CEO. As you get higher up the chain, you realise that everyone is actually making it up as they go along. Safety and stability are illusions. Money is the power to control your own life. Without money, you will always be at risk of being pushed around by life and by other people. The relationship between savings rates and time to fire. It's time for more people to get excited by savings. Here's the graph that showed me how powerful your savings rate is and why it is far more important than your investment returns. On the y-axis, we have the time until the person reaches retirement shown in years, or more accurately, financial independence, the position where work is voluntary. On the x-axis, we have the percentage savings rate, the proportion of post-tax salary that a person is able to save and invest. As we go from left to right, the savings rate goes from 5% of post-tax income 68 years to financial independence, up to 50% where it takes 17 years to get to financial independence and beyond. I still remember the light bulb moment when I realised that there's no point in earning a higher income if that doesn't lead to a higher savings rate. Your income doesn't directly affect when you can retire. Higher income just allows you to save a higher percentage of your income without extreme frugality. To show you how these numbers are built up, here's the maths for the 50% savings rate or circa 17 years to financial independence. In this example, our investor reaches financial independence in year 17, when their stash exceeds 25 times their annual spending and their withdrawal rate is below 4%. These assumptions are based on the following rules of thumb. The 4% rule. The safe withdrawal rate of 4% was first researched by academics William Bengen and later Wade Fowle in the Trinity study who calculated that a safe withdrawal from a portfolio of stocks and bonds in retirement to be around 4% of the portfolio each year, adjusting for inflation rises. The 25 times annual expenses rule. The 4% withdrawal rate can then be used to calculate how much is enough. All you need to do is work out your annual expenses and times this number by 25. For example, if a person needs 20k to live each year, then they will require 20k times 25 which equals 500k. Thus, the 4% withdrawal of the portfolio each year would provide them with 20k. If you need 100k per year, then the pot required increases to 2.5 million, another reason why life is easier if you have a bit of monk mode in you. If you are just starting out, don't let the high percentages put you off. I accept that for many people, these figures will not be achievable, or at least not yet, and not without a crazy level of frugality. I'm sharing them, because they illustrate powerful concepts. When you want to help people, you tell them the truth. Illustrating trade-offs. What's interesting about the shape of the graph is that it's non-linear, i.e. curved, so that the time taken to get to financial independence falls rapidly as the savings rate is increased. You get a big improvement in speed to fi when going from a savings rate of 10% to 20%. Less so when going from 50% to 60%. If that marginal increase in savings rate makes your life miserable, then it would be a mistake for you. Everyone has to figure out their own sweet spot. This is a very personal consideration for everyone, so I'm not going to say what is right or wrong. I'm just illustrating the trade-offs. What seems impossible for you right now may be possible for you in a few years' time. Where attention goes, energy flows. This is not deprivation. When people see graphs like the one in this video, a common reaction is, I don't want to give up all the fun in my life. The implicit assumption is that everyone is spending efficiently, consciously and mindfully. That's just not true. I hope you can see that buying non-designer clothing brands or not signing up to an expensive car lease or upgrading a mobile phone contract is not deprivation.
It's the sum total of thousands of decisions like this over the years that leads to results so good that it almost seems like magic. This is the aggregation of marginal gains. Don't get me wrong, saving is a wonderful thing, but even the best ideas can be taken too far. Plugging the leaks in your spending bucket and saving money is super important, but don't be penny wise and pound foolish. The problem for extreme frugalistas is that they won't spend any money on health, self-development or education. If you are saving money by not buying a potentially life-changing book, that's a rookie mistake. Not everyone can be a high earner or reach financial independence by 40 or whenever, but everyone can learn to get better with money. This is why I say that the tools of financial independence are for everyone. Amazing things are possible once you get on the path and keep going.